Hey everybody, Stu Smith here going live. I hope you are doing well today. Um, sorry, couldn't do it yesterday. We'll make up another day this week. And uh, maybe do the uh, CSS critique show then. So if you do have any uh, critiques you want to share, you can, or videos you want to share, I can critique them for you. Just DM me over at Instagram or um, email me, stu at suesmith.com. Um, one thing I am wanting to talk about today, as you can see, the title is an active duty transfer to spec ops jobs. I got this question, uh, I think from this forum, could have been an email, I just, I'm not 100% sure, but what are your thoughts on enlisting with plans to cross train into SOFs? SOF instead of training as a civilian and then enlisting into SOF? Would you recommend this for candidates who lack fitness? And now that I think about it, I think I somewhat answered this, but I answered this in full um, in this article. And I'm posting it in the comment section right now. You can see it over on military.com. And I kind of give... A short explanation I think I did in the last Q&A on this question. It's coming back to me, I think. Um, but this is the long answer. And the long answer basically is if you're in the Army or Marine Corps, by all means, there is a logical progression that occurs in becoming a soldier and a Marine that actually builds you up pretty nicely to go into special ops if you choose that path so the boot camps are harder you actually get in shape you know if you're out of shape you will get in shape um during those boot camps in fact i don't even recommend going to those boot camps or basic trainings um out of shape you need to be in shape just to be a soldier or a marine compared to going Navy or Air Force. I'm not even sure about Space Force. Don't know enough about it. Um, but, you know, th those are not physically as challenging as Army and Marine Corps. So you could actually go there somewhat deconditioned, get in a little bit better shape, but by no means is there a job in the Navy and Air Force that will progress into special ops. I mean, maybe rescue swimmer. I can't think of many more. Um, and, and that's in the Navy. Um, but in the Army and Marine Corps, you have, you know, harder boot camps, harder physical fitness tests. You have uh, infantry training, which is another level. You have advancements in, you know, airborne training, which is another level. You can go into Rangers. You can go into uh, Recon. You know, all of those are nice progressions to getting into SOCOM level special ops, whether it's a Green Beret program or uh, MARSOC program. And yes, so if you're goal is to go army or marine corps you could go in there in moderate shape you don't have to be in spec ops shape going in just good enough shape to get to and through that training program then you know take the next four or five years to progress your conditioning learn how to train grow older so you are finished growing um and just get in better shape for those spec ops programs in those uh branches of service whereas the navy and air force is so different that they recruit more from civilian side post boot camp there's a big prep course that everybody goes through for both uh, branches and then they go into their spec ops selection so they are pretty much like from day one boot camp <clears throat> to day one selection, probably four, I know, probably about five or six months 
you know, so they got a three, two to three month selection or sorry, preparation after boot camp. That boot camp's about, what's it, eight weeks, nine weeks now, um, maybe 10. So two and a half months of that, three months of selection or preparation for selection. So within six months, you're at selection. That's a tight window to be prepared. So you got to do a lot of your preparation before you go to boot camp. Otherwise, you're not even going to get selected to go to the preparation programs. You do that all before you show up at boot camp. All right, Tristan asks, how much progress do you typically expect from athletes in around eight weeks run time specifically? Mostly have done long, slow runs, currently running one day of repeats, one day of goal pace, one long, slow distance run. Um, I would say, you know, depending on your progression, you may want to run more than just three days a week. We typically run five to six days a week. Um, but if we're working on speed of a mile and a half or two mile distance, you, know, you can do that five, six days a week and only run a couple of miles a day and not beat your legs up with too high of a progression. Um, you don't have to run all that fast. One day can be a sprint day. One day can be two days can be goal pace days because that's the key. If you already have an aerobic base by doing long, slow distance runs, that's good. You're probably ready to ramp up the pace a little more. So I would continue to probably add another goal pace day in there, maybe even a sprint or hill day to make running a little harder. And then if you're starting to feel the, the pains of running, maybe take that long, slow distance day and make it a long bike day, right? Or swimming or rowing, you know, just do non-impact cardio at a nice, steady, you know, low heart rate zone two pace. If that's what, what your goal is. Focus more on your speed if that's the key. Then you can make eight weeks be very fruitful. I, I've seen guys go six to eight weeks, you know, dropping a minute, you know, almost two minutes off their mile pace for short distances. Now, you probably not going to do a, you might do a six minute mile for a mile and a half, but you're not going to do a six minute mile for a five mile timed run in that period that takes a little more time but you could probably go from an eight minute to a six six and a half minute mile for a mile and a half and then take that eight minute and make it a seven minute mile for the four or five mile timed run i've seen that happen within you know eight to twelve weeks <clears throat> Alex, yes, thanks. I'm all right. Um, so everybody says good morning. Hello. I might have a CSS critique in the hopper. I know I downloaded one this morning, <clears throat> and it was a good one. So if it's uh, if it's up here, we may just watch it today. Just because no one's asking questions, so I'm going to take up the space with some uh, CSS critique. Let me get this thing rolling here. Looks like it's a little slow. But if you got a question, let's see. A good pacing for swimming with fins is at three kicks, right? I'm not sure what that means. Are you talking about breathing with fins like three kicks and a breath because that's typically what i do i'll kick one two three pull my arms to breathe um all right let's share my screen here i got a video pulled up and this guy is doing pretty well i think it's about a 48 49 second 50 so notice what he's got here he's got a good streamline off the wall I like this. He glides, he glides, he glides. He's almost stopping, but he pulls. And notice, he didn't do a breaststroke pullout. Though I will say, he was slowing down a little too much for my liking right here. 
I would have probably pulled. I probably would have pulled about now, just so I didn't like almost stop. I think it's a little too deep. Now, <clears throat> the kick off the wall streamline was really good, but I'm not necessarily. I mean, it's this is very nitpicky, and this is the only nitpicky thing I have on this guy is just shoulder mobility, streamline, keep your head down, get those biceps on your ears. I shouldn't see, I shouldn't see the top of your head, right? Drop that chin down a little bit. Don't look forward. I see you looking forward a little bit. <clears throat> you can see it on the way back. <clears throat> so kick off the wall. I like that. That's nice. Comes up. Oh, changing sides. Okay, so top arm, bottom arm, kick. That's a good weak side. I think he's changed. Yeah, he changed sides on us. <clears throat> so good strong side, weak side. Could barely tell the difference. Uh, I will say that bottom arm probably doesn't need to be so big. You can turn it into more of a breaststroke skull. But I like this. Only thing I would change is don't look forward when you're gliding and just. Be a little more uh, chin tucked. This is good. And it's fast. I think you got, uh, boom, 48, 49 seconds. So I like that. That's good. My first IFT is coming up this week. How many days out do you recommend carb loading? <clears throat> I, You know, I, I don't really do a whole lot special. I just eat normal, right? So whatever you do prior to your normal workouts, do that prior to this test. Because anything that you change could be good, could be bad. I've seen a lot of people try new things out just because they hear it gives them more energy or something, whether that's caffeine, which is false. It doesn't give you energy. It just, just spikes your heart rate. Um, or you know, some carb that they're not used to eating, then they, you know, want to throw up or have diarrhea during the middle of their test. So just do your normal thing, right? I mean, I eat a lot of carbs. So if you're not a carb eater, then I would start eating carbs now. <laughs> you know, if you got three or four days of able to load some carbs on, I, I would just get that glycogen up to its peak and Go crush it. Um, what is the proper stroke to learn when swimming with fins? It depends there, Billy. Um, we use the CSS with fins. In fact, you can go to my reels. You can go to uh, TikTok. In fact, I probably even have some uh, on YouTube here. In fact, let me see. YouTube shorts. I bet you I have... Uh, some uh, CSS with fins. In fact, I know I do. In fact, I have two different kinds. In fact, I'm going to share this with you, Billy, because you need to see it. Because it is a two different ways to swim with fins. And then I'm going to show you a third way, right? And it depends on which... which let me get this volume off here. Messing up my head. Um, all right, so Billy, check out this link here. But I'm going to go ahead and just share my page because if you guys haven't noticed some of these shorts or reels I have, um, you should. You should watch them. All right, so here we go. CSS, CSS with fence. All right, so the top one is... CSS with fins, and if you notice, it's like one, two, three, kick, pull, and breathe. And he's constantly kicking. Now, the other one is called the lead arm trail arm with fins. And all he's doing is that bottom arm stays out in front, and that top arm stays on your hip, and you just flutter kick. Now, the third way to do it is, um, let me see if I have it, which this isn't a real fast way to do it. It's more of a um, rest 
with fins and it's called turtle backing where you um, just float over on your back and turtle back. Right now he's swimming with fins. As you can see, he's got a big scissor kick, little flutter kicks. One, two, three, kick, pull to breathe. One, two, three, kick, pull to breathe. And these are big rocket fins too. So you definitely need these uh, to get your ankles. Now this is turtle backing here. Lay, lay your head back, lean back, and just flutter kick. So it's very similar to the lead arm trail arm version, but you don't have an arm over your head and you're not turning on your side to breathe. So this is, uh, that's how you do it. So that's all my shorts over there. Oops. That's that article. Oh, by the way, if you're looking for the article um, about cross training effectively, it's over here on uh, uh, military.com slash military dash fitness and it, full article there give you some all right so <clears throat> i think we had another question here so does that answer your question billy css or lead arm trail arm are two ways i do swimming with fins um Yes, sir. So when swimming with fins, how many breathing strokes should one have in a 25 for efficiency? You know what? Be honest with you. I never really counted. Um, without fins, I'm usually breathing five to six times. With fins, probably less. Maybe three? I don't know. Never counted. You should have counted that guy's uh, last swim video. So go watch some of theirs. They're, those are good CSS videos, and you can see on those shorts how many breaths they take to get a 25 yards across. Um, hey, Stu, how's your faith helped you get through times and training, life, et cetera? Tough times. Um, yeah, it's always been there. You know, I don't necessarily wear it on my sleeve, but, you know, it's definitely there. This has been one of those weeks where um, it definitely has come in handy. Uh, one of my friends, one of my former students was one of those SEALs that uh, was missing two weeks ago. And he's the one that jumped in after. His name's Chris Chambers. They just released the names. Um, and he was probably one of the hardest working students and most humble mentors and i mentioned this in a in a post um and the ultimate swim buddy i mean he he was the type of guy that you know had some weaknesses he was a d1 swimmer knew he had some weaknesses and that's funny because i was looking back at old texts that we've shared over the years and emails and i found an email from 2010 of him asking to join our training program here locally um yeah that it just hurt so yeah when you say tough times those are tough times you know tough times as far as me performance wise <clears throat> doesn't even compare and then of course he was a friend to me um and a student who became a mentor to other students of mine and, um, but my pain in losing him is nothing compared to his dad's who called me up to tell me that he was missing, you know, two weeks ago. That's, that's tough times. Like my times are, you know, pe people are telling me, you know, sorry for your loss. And yeah, I appreciate that, but. You know, it's not my loss. It's everybody's loss. I mean, we lost, America lost a great guy. I don't know the other guy, but would assume, you know, because Chris jumped in after him, he was also a great guy. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I find that if you don't lean on 
something bigger than yourself in those situations, you won't move on. And it's very difficult to move on and push through. And uh, yeah, so there you go. So Billy says, uh, just starting to learn some of fans strength in my ankles. Yep, it takes time, Billy. Keep it up. Also, I see all the guys training for triathlon at the pool and they do turtle backing. Do you think that is real benefit besides resting? Um, I think it's a good active rest. I don't think it's fast, but it's a good just leg exercise. It's a great way. If you're doing a leg day, right, whether you're lifting or doing calisthenics or running and biking or rucking beforehand and you top it off with a swim workout, you want to work your legs a little more. Swimming with fins is a great way to top off a leg day. Turtle backing is a great one as well. <clears throat> yeah. Is not being able to float really de detrimental for candidates? Uh, well, it, it will require a gut check from you. All right. So there's usually three types of people that go into the tests in the water, like treading, drown proofing. Uh, you know, the air force does a, uh, snorkel buddy breathe while they're treading, holding on to their buddy. And you can only breathe through a snorkel that you share. It's a hard one, by the way, hats off to Air Force Special Warfare Pipeline guys that have to do that. That's hardcore. Um, but yeah, if you're negative, it sucks. Treading will suck. Floating will suck worse. But there's a couple of ways to get through that, especially if you're doing drown proofing and your feet are tied together and your hands behind your back. You have to keep your lungs filled with air as much as you can. So you almost breathe in reverse. So you focus on... Big inhales like this, full chest of air. <clears throat> Hold it for about five to ten seconds. You'll you'll notice when you're holding that air in, you won't have to kick as hard. So that's kind of a rest for you, but you're holding your breath, so you can get your heart rate's gonna get jacked up anyway. And then you exhale real fast, hard kick, big inhale, and you do it all over again. You may have to kick a little bit to stay up. But it's just steady dolphin kicks where you just you you bend at the waist like this. So this is your upper body. This is your legs here. Right. If I do it this way and you're just dolphin kicking with both legs like that. To stay up. And it works as long as you have uh, air in your lungs and uh, let, you know, just pace yourself and get in shape to be able to do it because it's it's not like swimming shape. Treading shape is different than sh than uh, than swimming shape. You know, swimming shape's different than running shape. I've seen a lot of five minute milers come into the pool and just say, "What is going on?" Or guys that row crew that are just have a VO two max of insanity, and they go into the pool and they're huffing and puffing the other side of the twenty five meter pool. So it's a different medium that you have to get in shape for. So whether that is swimming, floating, treading, whatever, drown proofing, you got to get in shape for it. Um, let's see. So let me share something with you. I'll share something with you over here on my TikTok page. If you guys aren't aware of this, um, you might like this. Uh, this is uh, this is my TikTok page, which is nothing but nothing but CSS type videos. <clears throat> so it's me talking about spec op swimming and what that means right here. Um, drown proof travel. Here's one where guys are drown proofing. Hey everybody, Stu Smith here. The, you know, hands, this time, we simulate this, so your hands behind your back, feet together. If you notice, they're the just dolphin kicking. Typically do like one, two, three, kick, 
have your hands tied and, behind your uh, back and your feet together. Take a breath on that third one. The test. We sim- but there's, it is like such valuable information over here. And I usually share them over on my uh, Instagram as well. So you can actually see the Instagram reels and much of them are the same thing. It's just that um, the problem with uh, um, the problem with the uh, it's not really a problem. The uh, Instagram page for the reels is uh, you can see there's a lot of CSS over here. So if you don't have TikTok, just go to my Instagram page. You'll see a lot of these, but you also see some of me, you know, doing stuff. There's some of my lives on there. So it's a little bit more of a mix of um, CSS. I think this one's me swimming. If you guys haven't seen this one. So I have, I just show you how I do it. Top arm, bottom arm, kick, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, pull. Right? So... Yeah, check it out. Wealth of information over there. If you're looking for CSS videos, you can find them on my Instagram, Stu Smith 50. You can find them on my TikTok, which is also Stu Smith 50. Um, hundreds of voiceover critiques on there. These are often submitted by you and uh, or they're filmed by me locally with uh, local candidates. So those are things that you can definitely uh, learn from. And if you have not watched people swim the CSS, you should if you're trying to learn the CSS because it's it's hard to learn it without seeing it. Unless you grew up swimming and you understand that whole process. <clears throat> you guys have any more questions over there? I appreciate everybody's uh, comments, whether you commented here on YouTube or you commented on my recent uh, social media post about Chris and uh, Nate Ingram. <clears throat> Billy says, when swimming with fins and buds, do they use bare feet? <laughs> Bare feet. That's funny how you spelled that because it's spelled like a bear's feet versus naked feet. Or do candidates use the water shoe? Yeah, you can call it a water shoe. We call them scuba booties. So look up the term scuba booties. And that's what you need on your feet. So you need a pair of fins like rocket fins or jet fins. I prefer jet fins. Um, that have a big enough footwell to put in uh, scuba booties like these. And I'm just going to just share my uh, screen with you here because this is real easy. All I did was go to Google, search scuba booties, and this is what you find. I personally like the ones, as you guys can see here, I personally like the ones uh, that have a little sole into it. So sometimes you get a sock. Right, these socks are got some anti skid on the bottom, that's helpful, but they're pretty inexpensive. I would probably be in that 30 to 40 dollar range if I'm buying a pair of booties. I mean, some of these things are really short, I find those rub a little bit more behind the ankle on the scuba strap, so get them a little taller. Um, five millimeters, great. Um, you can see they got all kinds. I mean, I, I've had a pair of wet that are almost like running shoes where, you know, I could, I could walk around. I could do run some runs, carry my fins with me. Those are a lot of fun. But, yeah, check out these. You could find some great ones on Amazon and uh, get what you need. Huh. Let's see. What was your favorite duty station? Um. I didn't have many. I had Annapolis. I had San Diego and Virginia Beach is where I live. Now, I trained and deployed to places um, 
that are very nice, like Rota. Rota Spain's awesome. Um, anywhere in the Mediterranean is just fun. Just fun places. Beautiful. Um, Hawaii. That's nice. <laughs> so, in fact, it's funny because uh, one of the reasons why I joined the Navy over the Army, and like everybody in my family was Army. Uh, name a war and every member of my family was Army, right? I don't think we had a Marine or a Navy guy. Um, so, you know, being 18 years old, I'm like, I'm going to pave my own path. And not do what everybody wants me to do. And I'm going to go to the Navy. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do that is, one, I wanted to be like Top Gun and fly fighter jets off aircraft carriers when I was 18. Um, but I also looked at where I would be living after I finished uh, the Naval Academy. And compared to where I'd be living after finishing West Point, let's say. Um uh, it was this night and day. I mean, every port, every city, you know, where I would be stationed is basically a beach town. So I've lived in, uh, visited, not lived. When I say lived, you know, a couple months, uh, Mayport, Florida, Pensacola, um, Tampa, Key West, um, Charleston. You know, lived in Norfolk full time there, Annapolis, San Diego. I mean, come on. Those are some nice cities. If you don't have booties, the rocket fins, it will destroy your ankle after a little. Oh, yeah, it doesn't take long. It will ruin your feet, top of your foot, back of your foot. Yeah. Do not wear big scuba fins without booties. Now, you can wear little slip-on snorkel fins. I might even call them flippers, right? I wouldn't even classify those as fins. Fins require a big scuba booty, for sure. Boot, or booty, whatever you want to call it. In fact, we used to wear uh, black chucks, you know, just for over-the-beach type stuff, you know, because they were a little smaller than our boots. They fit a little better into the uh, rocket fins and uh, we just wore chucks the whole time, which I, I found pretty comfortable. All right. You guys have any more questions? I'm going to have to shut it down. Got some busy stuff I need to do today. Well, I will tell you this. Um, it has been an emotional roller coaster the last two weeks. Um, one, of course, with with Chris missing and then presumed dead. That was the the low of the last two weeks. The high of the last two weeks. Uh, my daughter gets engaged to a great guy. Love him. My uh, son turns twenty one. I turn fifty five. Um, You know, it just, it was just a, it was a unique time that, you know, I, sh I was enjoying, but also, you know, had a, a big, uh, pull in the negative, negative direction that, uh, like I said, just made it up and down, up and down. Um, so so it's been a little rough. Yesterday was, oh, the last thing uh, on the lower side uh, was, uh, you know, we had a lot of snow here, uh, which is fun. I love snow. So that was kind of a plus. Uh, but then we also had ice. And I was walking down my driveway, just taking the garbage cans out and slipped on some ice. I didn't fall, which I probably should have just fallen uh, because I did some kind of acrobatic maneuver and caught myself and it almost looked like a one-legged backwards uh cartwheel right it was bad and i tweaked my back 
and I haven't been able to lift Monday. I did that Sunday. Have been able to lift Monday or today. Today I finally was able to move some weights without uh, being in pain. But last two nights, I have every time I roll over, I wake up. It's uh, and I I do a lot of mobility work, and um, yeah, I'm not used to feeling pain because uh, I've just been really lucky that I haven't had a lot of pain in the last twenty years of uh, making sure I'm really flexible and mobile. But this was just one of those cold weird movements that just pulled something that uh has been another downer so once once again it's been like this just ups and downs of life and we all have to push through and get through it and whether you do it through your faith or you do it through just being stubborn and moving on and trying to deal with it but talking about it i think is very helpful and uh you know, not letting it eat you up inside. So you guys keep moving in the right direction. You know, whether that is with fitness or your business or your life in general. And um, it requires work no matter what you're trying to do. So don't be scared to go to work and get things done. Sometimes we think way too much before we work and it shuts us down. My my go-to method is like, I got to get something done, just start doing it. Right. And then, you know, if it requires some directions or some steps, obviously maybe follow the steps and have a plan, but don't beat yourself up too much on trying to figure out the perfect plan because nine times out of 10, we, we all try to figure out the perfect plan and then it never gets done. So just start grinding, get it done. All right, guys, I probably won't be back tomorrow, but I think I'll do a Thursday. You'll see uh, if you guys are following uh, YouTube, um, you'll get a notification on uh, going live. So, you know, hit that uh, hit that um, like button and uh, follow, and you'll know when I'm going live. Bring some questions next time, and we will answer them. You guys have a good one.